The committee among CARICOM leaders was publicly violated at a ceremony in Grenada yesterday. This has provided me with the opportunity to speak frankly on a few issues. Let me start with the governance of West Indies cricket. The governance of West Indies cricket appears to be an evocative romanticism of a particular Caribbean head. Antigua and Barbuda, as a matter of principle, does not interfere in the internal affairs of institutions and governments that are governed by democratically elected officials. This is a universal principle on which my government stands. The core members of the West Indies Cricket Board, to the best of my knowledge, were democratically elected by the territorial boards. The board operates independent of governments. Now, there's a particular head who is of the view, and if I may add here the flawed opinion, that with my support and other heads, that he could achieve his compulsive, obsessive desire to dissolve the board. The latter, he fallaciously argued, would automatically resolve the multiplicity of problems facing West Indies cricket almost overnight. By the way, in the event he had gotten my support for this fantasy, the question would have been, how would he have achieved this forced dissolution? Talk is cheap. As leaders, we should know our limitations and control our aspirations by ensuring that they do not exceed our limitations. And I just want to say here too that we should also respect the rights of individual heads. Very, very important. Now there are a couple of issues that I would like to touch on. And the next one that I would like to address is the whole issue of Venezuela and the crisis in Venezuela. Now, Antigua and Barbuda stands firmly with the CARICOM declaration from which I understand some heads may, seeking, may be seeking to renege. Now, the CARICOM declaration is unoffensive and it was intended to be unoffensive. It calls for a peaceful resolution of the political problems in Venezuela, including the escalating violence it specifically calls for a resolution through diplomacy and dialogue. Most importantly, the Declaration firmly supports the universal principles of non-interference and respect for the sovereignty and independence of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. As far as we're concerned, adding offensive language to the Declaration could offend the sensibilities of the parties concerned or may even embolden the parties to become even more uncooperative and violent. Now, in the event there are clandestine motives for regime change in Venezuela, CARICOM should not be utilized as a stalking horse for regime change or for external intervention, be it wittingly or unwittingly, in the internal affairs of Venezuela. Now, an ungovernable Venezuela represents a greater security risk to the hemisphere and certainly to the Caribbean region than the present untenable situation, which is of serious concern. So I just want to recommend that we deal with this issue in a very sensitive manner and that we do not allow others to bully us into passing any offensive declaration that will undermine the attempt to achieve a resolution to the violence in Venezuela through diplomacy and dialogue. Now, insofar as the policy on Liat is concerned, the policy should be based on shared burden and shared benefit. Liat needs more planes. It needs more pilots. The staff needs an increase. The airline is struggling to pay its debts. In fact, it takes cash to operate an airline, not cheap talk, not political grandstanding. And those who do not contribute to Liet's operations and viability 
have no moral authority to demand increased yearly from layout. The rationale is simple. You contribute and then you can make your demands. There are no free lunches. And you know, the irony is that one Prime Minister is trying to engage me in the affairs of the West Indies Cricket Board. But on the other hand, he has refused to cooperate in ensuring the viability of Liat or to contribute to the viability of Liat. Now, those who do not support 